So I would, uh, I would like to ask you a few questions uh, about your career and about Braille for, for my YouTube channel. Is that all right? Hello? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can. There we go. There we go. Okay. So I would like to ask you a few questions about, uh, about your career and how you, uh, how you ended up uh, as a Braille teacher. So how did you end up as a, as a Braille teacher? It's kind of a long story, so I guess I'll start from the beginning. I uh, attended the School for the Blind and graduated in 1996, but I didn't go, uh, I went on to college, but I didn't finish college because I guess I wanted to explore the world. So my um, method is a little bit different from others. Uh, after I left college, I kind of just hung around for a while and thought I wanted to go get a computer science degree and change my mind on that. And so I wanted to really be in the work world. And so I worked at a company for a while that uh, produced called T-Based Communications, um, and it produced uh, documents in multiple formats. So basically, I was a Braille proofreader and then a uh, web accessibility tester for them. And then I went over to Blind Industries and Services of Maryland because I wanted to get in the door of their rehab department. And in order to do that, I had to work part-time in sewing. And so uh, basically, it, that's how I became a Braille teacher when I went over to the company. Um, the gentleman that headed that department, uh, Roger Williamson, or at least headed it in the area where I was working, um, he knew that was my goal. And so as soon as he could, it could happen, it happened. And so I worked there actually for about six years, not full time in rehab because they didn't have the clients uh, for it in that department at the time. But so I was teaching Braille and computer technology and some independent living and some cane travel, but mainly Braille and technology. Um, and I finally decided I needed to get that bachelor's degree. So I graduated in 2011 from Frostburg State University in Mar uh, Frostburg, Maryland. Um, and when I graduated, um, I went, I was still working at BISM part-time and then full-time for a little bit. But really I thought, why do I have this degree if I'm not using it? And so a Braille position came up at the West Virginia School for the Blind, of course, where I had attended. And so that's how I got the position. Um, I applied for it. There were actually two um, open positions I applied for, and they allowed me to take the one that that I preferred. And of course, I prefer Braille because I know Braille very well. So in doing that, I uh, got my literary certification, which they don't offer anymore. But so now I'm um, UEB certified, na national UEB certification. Oh, wow, that's interesting. And how many years have you been in general uh, with, with Braille and being interested in this? It, well, it, in Braille specifically, I guess, well, I've been working at um, the School for the Blind since December 2012. But I guess, uh, I mean, I started reading Braille when I was four, when I first, you know, went to kindergarten. And so it wasn't that I was interested in Braille, it was that I was interested in reading and writing, and I love to learn. And when I was a little kid, I wanted to be a teacher and a writer. Of course, now I'm both. But um, so my first interest, though, a lot of people, a lot of friends um, that I encountered, they went to college and they wanted to teach, you know, sighted kids. And there's nothing wrong with that. But I knew that I wanted to be in the field of blindness, which is why I worked in rehabilitation teaching. And of course, part, part of that was Braille. So, um, so that's how I kind of got into Braille. And I guess you could say I've been in the work world with Braille for probably 14 years, but of course I've been full-time teaching Braille for uh, about seven and a half. Wow, that's interesting. That's really cool. And uh, what have what tools and uh, technology have you uh, have you found yourself using over the years? How has uh, technology impacted? Uh, uh, your your daily life and as well as teaching others? Well, as far as um, tools and technology, I have an old Perkins Brailler here at my house and I do use it. In fact, I've uh, got paper in it right now for this convention that I'm taking hard copy notes on. Um, I ordered a BrailleSense Plus from eBay because 
Um, I, I didn't have the money to afford a, you know, five thousand dollar note taker. Um, it kind of is under the weather right now, so <laughs> so I sent and and I've had it for several years, so I mean it's okay. But um, so um, I have uh, experimented with the Braille Orbit because I was able to afford that, and actually I gave it to my brother because it tended to erase files, and I didn't like that. He's also blind. Um, so um, in the classroom, though, I like to experiment with lots of different technologies. Some of my kids I'm teaching Slate and Stylus to. Um, some of my kids, uh, most of my kids are using some sort of technology. Some sort of it means the APH has this um, little device. It's pretty new, so I'm going to have to tell you. I don't remember the name of it, but basically it's got the letters of the alphabet and a Braille style keyboard. And so they can they can play with that and learn Braille. It doesn't output anything. It's just a, uh, it's, it just takes like, I, think, I can't remember if it's two or four AA batteries, but it also talks. So like if they press dots one, two, depending on the mode, it might say B or it might say dots one, two, or it might say a word, you know, the word beginning with B. So it's kind of like one of those little things you get for kids at Walmart, you know, that that's the alphabet kind of things like, but in, it, but this one is is particular to braille so that is for some kids some kids i've actually um got using uh the braille note apex we've also got some braille note a braille note touch which i was not impressed with um and we're about to get several of the hymns products which only kinds of concerns me because uh i'm not sure how well tech support is for them but i love my braille sense plus so the products hopefully are good um, and, and we'll see, I guess. So we try to use a lot of different ones. Some of those I use in the classroom. Um, some of those the students um, use in my classroom and in other classes and in, in the technology lab, like they might use some things. Like for example, they're using a 3D printer. While that's not braille, it's still tactile, but they're learning how to print with it. Of course they can feel whatever designs come out with it and that sort of thing. So as far as technology, it, it just depends. I have a uh, tiger embosser in my classroom uh, I have a Juliet Pro here at home. I prefer the Juliet, but I have a tiger that I can emboss stuff with there in the classroom. Of course, I teach the kids to use it, and I teach the kids to use the Duxbury, depending on skill level. So I guess it depends on the needs of the students. Several of them use the Perkins Brailler as, as they're learning. I've tried the Smart Brailler, but uh, the Smart Brailler has some challenges with it. it it's not always accurate. Um, it's great because it motivates kids, but it's not always accurate. So um, I guess, you know, all, all the other common things I use, like a, a Braille labeler I have here at home. And of course we have that at school. We, I also have an abacus, even though that's not Braille. Again, that's a tactile tool um, that kids can use to, to do math rather than just always getting the answer from a calculator. Although we do teach them how to use the calculator. The Braille note has a calculator, you know. Um, I am using right now at home, a braille uh, braille at 14 the kids use them at, at school except they don't use the 14s they i think they use the 40s i don't remember for um statewide testing but for me the braille 14 was free to check out from the library so um i and i love it it pairs easily to my phone i can type on the phone easily with it it reads like i can read my uh i have a couple books on ibooks that i read my bookshare books i send the voice stream and i can read those with that uh, display so well, anyway nice. um I great things about the brilliant for sure yeah so uh so that's kind of uh, i guess an overall i'm sure i'm missing some things but you know but i've got a lot of experience i started way back in the days of uh, braille and speak so Oh wow, I, I I remember those uh growing up as well. It's 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 great how how much uh, the assistive technology has grown. But there's one device that is it's it's new of its kind and it's the new it's it's a braille device with a QWERTY keyboard, uh the one that APH announced. And Yeah, I heard that the Mantis or something? Yes, the Mantis. What's your thoughts on that because you know, a lot of these devices, they use the Braille input and not a QWERTY keyboard. Do you think that'll make it easier uh, for, for you to, to use and also for you to teach uh, other Braille users with? Well, I had, back when I was in college, um, rehab to get me a PacMate. And a PacMate has a QWERTY keyboard. Um, it also had a lot of other bugs with it. 
unfortunately. So I, I didn't use it as much, but I thought one of the things back in the days of the Braille and Speak and in the early days of the Braille Note that, um, that I found difficult was if you would press a key, it would often give you the wrong letter. Like you might press dots two, three, four, six, instead of the T-H-E sign, you might get an O-W sign, for example, or something. So, uh, so I was a little bit concerned when I asked for that device, which is why I asked for that device. So um, I don't know about this new device. APH hasn't impressed me lately with uh, some of their products, like the Smart Brailler, as I was saying, um, messes up a lot. A lot of times at school, I get the uh, Building on Pattern series and uh, the pages, some of them have an extra seven for whatever reason, and, and they just, I find errors in them. So that kind of concerns me, but I mean, I'm always willing to look at a device and see how it works. And um, I haven't checked the price of that device uh, or whatever, but our outreach center often will get um, devices to share, you know, throughout the state. And so if they get one of those, I may go over and explore it. Or if I get to go to an APH conference, I may go explore it. I don't, like I said, a lot of it will depend on price and uh, that sort of thing as far as for school. Uh, I don't at this point plan to get it from home just because of the quality or lack thereof of their products here lately. Oh yes, I did notice that they had like a lot of things like, it was, like some of them you had to adjust certain settings. You had to turn off uncontracted, uh, you have to turn off contracted braille. Otherwise they, it runs into issues. I did notice some of that. Uh, during their uh, uh, convention when they were talking. And I, I was a little bit concerned about the quality as well, because if you have to have that setting on, it's not just plug and play. Right. Was, and, and But that's probably with any display, though. A lot of times you have to figure out, in your, like if you're pairing it, what you want to have it on like this, um, this Mantis has to, I think, be an eight-dot mode. So there is a little bit of you have to be a you have to know like if you're using your iphone you have to know how to go into voiceover and how to change those some of those settings too yes definitely and uh also i wanted to ask you what's your favorite thing about this conference what has been your uh, favorite thing uh, and uh, how do you feel about it being a uh, virtual now i kind of like that it's virtual because um i can go through the attendees list and see what other teachers are um, there and to see what other people that you know work in the field of braille or assistive technology and so I can network like that whereas at the regular conference not that you don't meet people like that but it just seems easier to go through a list and you know send a message and ask a question and, and things like that. Um, probably my favorite part of the conference was the meeting this morning, and I don't remember what it was called, but it was from 10 to 12, and it was about all things about Braille, and they talked about the, the favorite, my favorite part about that meeting was they were talking about um, NLS doing, now piloting their new Braille device, and I thought, man, I wish that was in West Virginia, and I don't know how long it takes them to do pilot testing or whatever they call that e-reader, but I'm highly interested in that. So that was probably my favorite uh, part so far. Wow, that's interesting. Well, thank you for, for your time and uh, for this great conversation. I definitely learned a lot about Braille technology because I, I, I know partial Braille grade one, but not grade two. I'm not so familiar with it, even though I've been around Braille since I was a kid. Uh, right. I got into full-time uh, Braille user, but I like this because I learned a lot about some technologies and the uh, looking at uh, your opinion on Braille from another standpoint, because I always see the companies, you know, what they think, and it, it's nice to see what an actual Braille user thinks about right. Products. Yeah, you learn a lot from the companies, but you also learn a lot from talking to people. Yeah. Oh yes, definitely. Well, thank you for your time. I will. Uh, I will send you the link to the interview if you would like to uh, share it or whatnot. Sounds good. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a nice day. You too.